Hey everyone, um, I've decided to record this uh, lesson to talk very briefly about something very important in ZBrush uh, and that is how do you restore or create uh, subdivision levels for your model. I'm, uh, it, it is a pretty basic lesson and I'm not going to talk about uh, what subdivisions are, I assume you know that, but I was very surprised to find out how many artists don't know how to um, restore subdivision levels or create sub subdivision levels if they don't have them uh, on the model and that is crucial you basically cannot do anything in ZBrush any serious sculpting any serious posing without uh, having subdivision levels on um, so this is what I'm going to talk about today <clears throat> and to do that I'll use few models um, uh, this is part of a sculpt um, from a game project which we have currently in production. Let's talk about subdivision levels and how you go about getting back to them. It's absolutely insane to work without them and um, in ZBrush, this is ZBrush uh, 2018 and uh, all recent versions of ZBrush, they have uh, pretty robust tools actually for working with topology and things like that. So uh, getting back to subdivision levels is very easy. What we have here uh, is a merge. This uh, several uh, several elements here. They're all merged into a single mesh. Let's split it up. We go to split. Let's see if uh, polygroups are on. They are on. Uh, Subtool split group split. We'll split it up. I want to mm, work with this one for now <clears throat> because we want to restore subdivision levels on per subtool basis. So. Um, what we have here uh, is, is an arm, it uh, has 26,000 polygons, so it is not much. So basically this particular uh, object doesn't really need uh, any complicated procedure to restore its subtools. Uh, but let's pretend that it is uh, a more difficult situation. We have, let's say, a million and a half polygons. I, I have divided it several times and now I will remove lower subdivision levels just for the sake of example how do we go about restoring this uh, subdivision levels because when we are talking about subdivision levels we want the lower subdivision levels to be uh, not very dense because that way you can really really work with geometry and I will show it once I have uh, those subdivision levels restored first of all when you're working in ZBrush it's very important to have um, plenty of memory both uh, regular memory and video memory because uh, previously in previous versions of ZBrush I believe ZBrush primarily used system memory for all its operations but they are changing things uh, a little bit now and uh, since I've uh, upgraded my video card I've and, and also added some system memory I, um, ZBrush stopped crashing completely and um, demands of today's modeling are such that you are going to work with pretty dense meshes but uh, when we're we're talking about restoring and having subdivision levels it, it's not about uh, system uh, resource management it is uh, about managing the topology in such a way that you can easily work with it so well if you have plenty of memory it's pretty easy what you do is you add a couple more subdivision levels I just pressed ctrl D and I have 27 million polygons right now because uh, I'm, I'm so surprised because like uh, seven years ago this would completely crush my computer right now it works it doesn't even lag much so we have like in geometry we have three subdivision levels the lower level is um, like I said one and six one and six million the highest level is 27 million let's bring it down we go go to the lowest subdivision levels it's a pretty simple trick free subdivision levels when we do that uh, ZBrush temporarily removes uh, all subdivision levels uh, other than the one which is currently active so uh, we have it frozen and now we can uh, do several things uh, we can either do Dynamesh with uh, like uh, I have resolution 128 Let's see what it does for us. Uh, pretty low. Let's bump it up a little. 600. Something like this. 
um, a sign that you have a proper lowest subdivision level and it is always about having uh, the proper lowest subdivision level because that's where you will uh, really feel the difference when you're posing the character and just moving polygons around so um, <clears throat> right now I have five I've managed to bring it down to five let's let's undo that and um, go a little higher maybe seven or eight hundred eight hundred resolution and you really have to go at it is trial and error you uh, because each mesh has a different scale you cannot know ahead of time which resolution you're going to get with uh, specific um, numbers here uh, so right now um, it's a little denser and it is good uh, I st still see individual polygons so <clears throat> unpress Dynamesh so I don't activate it by accident and then I unpress the free subdivision levels button and uh, what it does it projects the details it remembers uh, that um, I used to have two subdivision levels and she keep um, the program keeps uh, the uh, really dense versions where I have 27 million polygons in memory <clears throat> and then it's uh, it, it merges it all together so it recreates uh, the lowest um, uh, two higher subdivision levels just dividing the geometry twice and then it projects uh, the details on the new geometry uh, with new density and that way we have our um, details back right now it, it is still calculating um, it will take uh, a few seconds I think with this one it all depends on how uh, dense your lower subdivision level is when it comes to all the operations primarily in ZBrush uh, so yeah it completed uh, the projection and as you can see it's pretty good it did a great job um, and we now have the highest subdivision level at uh, 220 and uh, let's see the lowest subdivision level at 13,000 and check out the difference when I'm uh, talking about posing here's what I mean let's say I need to bend the arm <clears throat> I masked part of the arm I click uh, I press control and I click several times on, on the geometry also um, mirror uh, the mask because it produces different results when I, uh, I, I do the blurring of the mask um, <clears throat> okay uh, then what I do um, this nasty little thing inside new version of ZBrush is this uh, dumb gizmo of, uh, which they added because they thought that real uh, <clears throat> normal transpose in ZBrush doesn't work properly I suppose I don't know why uh, if you find yourself that your transpose is not working in ZBrush you just uh, go to transform and you unpress this round thing because this thing is useless uh, well maybe it is useful for very specific purposes but generally speaking trans transpose regular ZBrush transpose just uh, should be on by default I think so uh, basically uh, we recreated subdivision levels uh, we are on the lower level of subdivision and now we can bend it and it bends smoothly you see when we are on the highest subdivision levels this trick will not work or at least it will it will work but it will produce different results uh, <clears throat> if I do absolutely the same thing as you can see the mask doesn't blur so the result will be different see it's it produces this artifacts because uh, because we cannot uh, cannot make the mask well enough <clears throat> and there are other benefits as well because uh, many sculpting brushes they work very differently on different subdivision levels uh, higher subdivision levels when you are going into uh, millions they are for detailing you will see uh, you will go there if you need to add fine details so if you need to pose the character you really need to introduce some um, serious changes uh, to the shape and form of the geometry you really need subdivision levels but let's say we have a different situation <clears throat> different situation where um, let me go to the highest subdivision level and just for the sake of argument uh, let me open a different model because we were staring at this model for a while and it is getting pretty boring this here is a different model I did it the other day uh, it is a shoulder pad for the character 
but same character for the uh, game we have in production by the way you might want to check by the way you might want to uh, check out the uh, other assets from that project the link will be in the description so basically um, let's say that this particular element has 65,000 polygons let's say it has more it has 6 million or let's go in even higher for the sake of argument 25 million it has 25 million polygons and we will delete the lower level and let's say we it's lagging a lot for some reason and um, we cannot go any higher it's very dense already so what do we do about that first thing that you want to do here is basically just use dynamesh right away uh, with pretty high pretty high settings first let's try something small 300 just to see where we are in terms of scale um, and by the way don't press the project button because we are working uh, we are going to um, work with pretty high settings and project button it basically uh, projects details from old mesh to a new one but since the new one is pretty dense already we don't need that and uh, with project button on the operation will go much much slower so basically Dynamesh did it uh, did its work and uh, it is a pretty dense mesh and we almost didn't lose any of the details but it's not good enough it's not good enough because I want denser let's go to a let's go to 800 Dynamesh 1.5 million and now we can do the old trick we add two more subdivision levels now we are back in uh, almost back to where we were 22 million polygons uh, we go back again only now we have three subdivision levels and we're using the old trick we are going to the lowest level we are freezing subdivision levels now let's try zero measure zero measure is also a relatively old tool in zbrush uh, it did create quite a bit of commotion when it first came out because people thought that it is a replacement for a manual retopology well presently there is no repla replacement for manual retopology but the zero measure can be still useful because um, whenever uh, dynamesh doesn't give you uh, the best results you can always try zero measure and see how it goes so um, let's try and see how this mesh will work if we let's say try and and here we can actually put in uh, and i'm putting it in in the wrong place uh put in the target number of polygons in the thousands 40 means 40,000 polygons we will have after we press the remesh button let's press this button and see uh what we will get zero measure works works much slower because it analyzes the topology analyzes the topology but uh, on the upside we get a very even topology which is easy to work on so sometimes uh, sometimes it is better uh, not to use dynamesh in this situation but to use zero measure instead and the we are trying to use it here just for the sake of argument we don't really need it on this mesh but it is an exercise anyway so and look it's all done so um as you can see the we see the polygons visibly it's a good sign it's what the low subdivision uh, level should be like um, <clears throat> and right now we just unpress freeze subdivision levels and we will start reprojecting back the details and because we have a topology uh it should work really well well it took roughly two minutes but look what we have we have the mesh which maintains all its details all everything that was originally present on the mesh each little crevice everything is still here if we had even smaller details i think they would be preserved as well so uh this is how you go about um getting lower subdivisions back and um we will get back to this asset we will get back to this asset because it will uh, be re-apologized and uh, we will create maps for it and if you are uh, interested in how this 
all will uh, how I will go about doing all that um, stay tuned to this channel and in the future videos we will talk about that so basically if you have any questions uh, about uh, modeling sculpting animation things like that feel free to leave the questions in the comments uh, and I will try to get to those questions and answer them on this channel in one of the future videos and that is all I have for you today I hope this was helpful